having with us in studio the Mining Cabinet Secretary Najib Balala will be speaking about the recent High Court ruling as well as what plans he has to deliver the Ministry of Mining and also the roadmap for the Ministry. But before we begin, his Ministry has been on the spot in terms of graft allegations and we run, will be running a clip right now just to get an understanding of some of the issues that have been happening in the Ministry. is being taken backwards by the actions of the minister. They are illegal in law. His bill is a fundal. Right now we are guided by the Mining Act, which was approved by Parliament then. We should not, we should not play around with an industry like this by feeding rubbish to Kenyans. Well, I worked up Jacob Juma there, who is a director at Kotec Mining. Now let's get into the thick of things here, Najib Balala. Your ministry has been at the forefront of trying to institute major reforms in the mining industry and you have received in equal measure uh, allegations that you, your ministry is corrupt. What do you make of this? Well, first of all, the last person to speak is Jacob Juma himself. Mm -hmm. He got the license of mining of Cotec on the 7th of March while all of us are busy at Bombers of Kenya. Mm -hmm. How did he get it? He has not got an approval of NEMA, no approval of Kenya Forest Service, no approval of, of national museums. Even the committee that sat down and said he, he, should, be not, he should not be given the license the commissioner of mine then went and used his powers and granted the license against the advice of the committee. So, was so it that, just, just that to jump itself, in? Was it the court ruling was very clear. The procedure used was illegal, mm -hmm. and I, as a minister who was very new, I acted on public interest to stop such fraud that took place in the Ministry of Mining. So, in actual sense, how could this happen in the first place? Well, uh, you see, why did I cancel the licenses? I cancelled 43 licenses. I did not cancel Cortex license. Mm -hmm. I cancelled 43 because they were issued after the dissolution of Parliament. When there is the dissolution of Parliament, till elections and a new president is sworn in, mm -hmm. and because this time there is a transition to a new regime, mm -hmm. we need to hold, especially these are assets and resources of of the people of Kenya. So we came, we investigated, we got a complaint from the Kenya Chamber of Mines mm -hmm. to tell us that the processes of licenses were illegal and we acted as government on public interest. But Waziri, in equal measure, Kotec has... You demanded for a bribe of 80 million shillings as well as a house. How true is this? That is rubbish. I want to say that he cannot prove that I have demanded such amount of money. If I demanded that amount, he should have gone public before I cancelled the license. The cancellation of license was beyond me as Najib mm -hmm. It was something that needed to be done even before I came in. The, 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 the action by Kenya Chamber of Mines was actually on the 2nd of April, before I was appointed the minister. Mm -hmm. So action was going to be taken on Kotec and any other company that was granted. I want to tell you, Abe. 43 companies were cancelled. Yes. Only one went to court. Mm -hmm. 42 went and kept quiet. Mm -hmm. We formed a task force, independent task force of, of Mohamed Nyaoga. Yes. 22 of them disappeared in thin air. The rest went to submit themselves to the committee. Granted that opportunity. The rest did not qualify, and the others who disappeared including we got others who never even applied and they saw their names in the list of revocation. So you could see mm -hmm. there's a lot of fraud that took place in that department before we came in as government. And still in connection to that, um, following the issues that came about in your ministry, you did suspend the Commissioner of Mines. Yeah. And up to date, we haven't received any report that uh, goes ahead to actually substantiate that he did indeed take part in all these uh, particular graft claims as well as issuance of these licenses. 
Well, first of all, uh, we suspended him immediately. It has a process of interdiction. Mm -hmm. Yes, now the court has ruled he abused his position as a commissioner, mm -hmm. and now he's going to be totally interdicted by government. Mm -hmm. We have even the proof that he was a member of that committee headed by the, by the PS then, and then that committee said, against the advice of the ministry to go ahead and issue the license on the 7th of March while we were all doing and waiting for conclusion of the elections. As well as um, a lot of issues have come up within your ministry, even stakeholders saying that you are you are actually running things using um, a lot of, uh, um, I would say, high-handedness in your approach, as well as um, this has actually boiled down to the fact that um, the mining bill hasn't even been as ascended to by members of the parliament. First of all, Abe, let me tell you, priority is a mining bill. The minute I came in as a minister, I, I went into the mining bill. We are now, we have got it approved by the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. It's now in the second house where we are waiting concurrence. In the next one month, we'll get it done. Mm -hmm. But things, business will not be as usual in the Ministry of Mining. Mm -hmm. You want to call me hard-handed person? I have no apologies. Every company must... Everybody comes in and takes a license without compliance, without fulfilling the law requirement of what is, is required for a license to be, to be granted. Mm -hmm. So that, I'm not going to entertain all that. All this inter uh, intimidation by Jacob Juma and the rest. Jacob Juma should be the last person to speak. He mm -hmm. wanted to fleece... Uh, National, uh, National Cereals Produce Board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, mm -hmm. he he claims to be producing, to wanting to be paid, while he did not even uh, uh, deliver a single grain of that commodity. Mm -hmm. So people like this, we should be worried about. We should fight corruption. I have a history, Abe, on fighting corruption since the days of the mayor. Mm -hmm. I have been a history. Uh, I have a history of transforming ministries from heritage to 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 tourism to today Ministry of Mining. I will not be intimidated with such behaviors. So do you think um, corruption is fighting back? Well, it can fight back, but I'm not going to be intimidated. Council of Cortec worth billions of shillings, and I want to tell the country today, that license will not be given to individuals. That license is going to go to the National Mining Corporation, which is a parastatal of government, mm -hmm. and it will exploit that resource on behalf of the people of Kenya. And the first beneficiaries will be the people of Mrima, mm -hmm. the people of Kwale, and the, na and the nation at large. So but we are not going to give to any peddler who do, do not have even a single license elsewhere in the world, and they want to take advantage and make millions out of a paper called a license from the government of Kenya. You did suspend uh, close to 43 licenses and uh, so what's the position in terms of what's next for these companies? Should they reapply? Well, it's two years now since we've done that. We have uh, appointed a task force. They submitted themselves into the task force. Mm -hmm. I told you, 22 of them disappeared. Did not even submit themselves to the task force. The rest, we gave them a license. Mm -hmm. Ten of them, we granted them. The rest could not be fulfilling those requirements, and we cancelled their license. Simple. And indeed, the mining ministry and also the mining sector at large is one of the key areas that, if Kenya gets it right, it's going to experience significant economic transformation. Abel, let me tell you, we are doing major transformation in the Ministry of Mining. Yeah? We have now introduced an online cadastre system where you apply the application form for license online. So there'll be no influence of a minister or a commissioner of mines. When, the, when that resource is available on the cadastre, you are automatically granted as far as you fulfill what is required for compliance. Mm -hmm. So those hanky-panky of, of making sure you want influence are over. Mm -hmm. So we have removed that discretionary power, and that's a major reform. We have now collected 845. Yeah? Before, in 2011-2012, the revenue for, for royalties had been 21 million. A major step in terms of revenue. And here we have not even co uh, enforced so much on compliance. We are just trying. And mm -hmm. we have not even developed the potential of minerals in this country. Uh -huh. We have gold, we have copper, we have, we, have, we have chrome. We have many minerals that we are yet to discover 
and to exploit. Mm -hmm. We are doing an airborne survey yes. very soon, mm -hmm. and then we will know what wealth do we possess as a country. The other thing is that we are now digitizing the system and all the geodata that we have. So that an investor, when he comes in, he doesn't have to spend a lot of money in exploration, but will have a tangible, tangible uh, data that he can work in and then be able to start exploiting the resource as soon as possible. So these are major issues. Ima uh, I can tell you that to build an institution as a ministry is not easy. You know? We are, we, are, we are up and we are going to take off very soon and at least we have achieved ma major hurdles. I want to encourage the Senate in the in very near future, please, we want that bill so that it can be able to manage the, the, this sector uh, effectively and efficiently. So what's your outlook, Waziri, as we also wind up? Our well, I'm optimistic. I believe that Kenya has more than just tourism and agriculture. Uh, the mineral resources are going to benefit this country. We need to manage it well. And we need to make it center to the people of Kenya. Mm -hmm. If the people do not benefit from this resource, then there will not be benefit to the nation. That's why my policy is based on three pillars. One is stability and predictability. Two is transparency and accountability. Mm -hmm. And three is equity. People must, get, uh, uh, must feel the difference in their lives from that resource, from the village, to the county, to the nation. KTN we can prime and as you've heard it there the Naj Najib Balal actually indicates that his ministry has been very